My new book is called The Lucky Years, and I called it that because of the remarkable breakthroughs that are literally happening every week in the health and medicine space. And we are living at the greatest time to happen in our space. And so in order to benefit from it, you actually have to be active. It's not gonna come to you, you have to go to it. So all of a sudden, in the last year, we can use an enzyme called CRISPR and change one of the three billion letters of the DNA code. We can make your immune system attack cancer. So we can actually uh, get rid of cancer without drugs. We can change the fertility of a woman. It used to be that you had to be pregnant in their 20s or 30s, and once you got 40 or 50, that went down. Well, we can now change that. We have remarkable new ways of looking inside the body, interrogating what's going on, knowing what's going to happen and trying to prevent it. This is an unparalleled time in the history of medicine and health. And so in order to benefit, we all need to pay attention. We all need to know what's going on with ourselves and have those discussions with the doctor. So the lucky years is written with a sense of optimism that I truly believe in. And so to me, it's exciting to play a part and it's exciting to tell the story of you about what it means. One of the questions I'm asked all the time is, how do I live a long, healthy life? And I'm gonna give you five tips now to get there. So number one is movement over time. We need to focus on not just that hour at the gym, but how we move during the day. Get up off your butt at least five, 10 minutes every hour. Number two is regularity in schedule. When you get up, when you go to bed, and when you eat your meals, and nothing in between the meals. Get on that regular schedule. Number three is eat real food. Mediterranean diet, real food, is critical to a long-term health. Number four is focus on prevention. So whether that be taking an aspirin a day, getting your colonoscopy at age 50, or getting a flu shot every year, really develop a prevention plan with your doctor. Number five is the best one, which is enjoy life, smile. We all feel it, when you smile, do an experiment now, smile, your body changes, your chemicals in your body change. People with a positive outlook do better across the board in clinical trials. So figure out a way to enjoy as much of the day as you can. We'll all benefit. Focus on those five rules and all of us will have a much better shot at living a longer, healthier life. Sleep is something that we hear about a lot in the headlines over the last several months. Um, but it's always been there, right? We know we need sleep. We all know it. Well, let's look at the data. The rules to sleep based on data are the following. Number one, try to stick to a schedule. That means trying to go to bed the same time every night, get up the same time in the morning. Don't change your schedule on the weekend. Your body strives for regularity. We need to respect that. Number two is, as much as possible, try to make it quiet at night when you sleep. And so I have a 150 pound dog that snores, so I wear those orange foam earplugs at night so my brain can get the quiet it needs during the night. Number three is try to avoid blue light before you go to bed. So what that means is about two hours before going to bed, no screen time. iPads, cell phones, TVs. But if, like me, you wanna watch a little bit of TV before you go to bed, wear those gamer glasses. Those are glasses with a yellow lens that filter out the blue light of the screen so your brain doesn't think it's daytime. When your brain thinks it's daytime, even if you fall asleep, it's not gonna be as deep as we'd like. When you follow those rules for sleep, we're all gonna get a better outcome the next day and also long run for our brain. Reading is one of the great things we can do for our brain. And I think we've moved away from it in recent years. We're all watching all the great content on television and movies. We have to go back to a good old book. So whether you like doing it on an electronic device or on paper like me, good books matter. And so go online now, go to Indigo, pick out your books for a year and develop a plan. In the long run, it's best for your brain and you. The other critical thing is that that downtime during reading is actually when things during the day sink in. You remember more of what happened during the day if you spend an hour without distraction reading. And so make it part of your day every day, both for the short run and the long run, all of us will benefit.